Welcome back. Let's try to unscramble some of the logic behind the naming of many of our American cartridges. You know, the naming of American cartridges has gone through many different uh, systems through the years. None of them are uh, very consistent with one another, and I think that's what confuses uh, many people. And our system is not based on any standard. Uh, the European, continental Europeans have a metric standard which uh, applies to two numbers. The two numbers are separated by the time symbol. So 7 by 57 means 7 millimeter bore diameter and 57 denotes the length of the cartridge case, not the length of the entire cartridge, but just the cartridge case. But being the Americans that we are and free speaking people that we are, we don't uh, adhere to any particular standard for things. We uh, do things as we uh, feel fit, and that's good. Uh, it, it adds variety and spice of life. It's a lot more interesting for me to see uh, a, a number such as uh, 300 uh, Winchester Magnum, uh, which has a proprietary name than to just see a, a simple uh, digit. So that's the way we do things. Now, the, there was at one time a system in this country that applied to metallic cartridges when they were uh, before the smokeless powder era, in the black powder era of the uh, 19th century. And in that situation, we had uh, such cartridges as 4570, for instance, which denoted the uh, 45 diameter bore and the uh, 70, meaning 70 grains of black powder. And that, that particular cartridge lives on. There were quite a number of cartridges during the black powder era with that particular consistent naming system. And as we moved into the 20th century, Winchester developed a cartridge which was called the 30 WCF, the 30 caliber Winchester Centerfire. So how did it become the 3030? Well, when Marlin stepped into the game, basically they took the uh, 30 WCF chambering, and perhaps because uh, there was no uh, copyright patent applied for, uh, the number was changed for their rifle instead of instead of using uh, 30, 30 WCF on their rifle they simply uh, used their own number which was 30-30 smokeless. Now it was a smokeless cartridge. The very very first smokeless cartridge in the world was the 8 millimeter LaBelle cartridge. That's a, that's a very strange looking cartridge with a huge uh, base strong taper uh, but that, that, the French 8mm uh, LaBelle was the very first smokeless cartridge in the world. But uh, our 3030 was our first uh, commercial smokeless, uh, smokeless cartridge. But when uh, Marlin adopted the uh, chambering for their uh, 336 Marlin, what they did was simply use the old naming standard that was familiar to Americans as 30-30. But this time, 30 did not. The last 30 did not apply to the uh, capacity of uh, black powder, but rather to the capacity of the very bulky smokeless powders that existed at that particular time when smokeless powders first came out. So that was the transition period. And then, oddly enough, uh, the cartridge eventually uh, evolved into being the 3030 Winchester. So it went through the. It went through basically three different. Uh, names. It started out as the 30 WCF, then it went to the 30-30 smokeless, which was Marlin's designation, and then probably Winchester applied for their own patent uh, because it was their original cartridge, and it became, and uh, these are details I don't really uh, have that much familiarity with, but I know that it did go back to being the 30-30, but this time Winchester, using Winchester's original name. So, then we get into the 30-06. Well, that, doesn't, that looks very familiar because it has that same standard of using uh, two hyphenated digits, but in this case, the 06 applies to the year that the cartridge was introduced by Springfield Armory. That was not the year of its uh, original uh, 
development. The original development was the 1903 for the 1903 Springfield rifle. And that particular cartridge was a 220 grain uh, round nose bullet with a very fast twist barrel. And when the Mauser company in Germany changed their 8 millimeter Mauser to a, a slower twist for a faster high velocity bullet, a lighter weight bullet, we corresponded by uh, outfitting our rifles by calling them all back in, yanking the barrels off, rechambering them uh, with new barrels, and re-releasing it with a uh, slower twist, a 1 in 10 twist, and it became the 30 caliber cartridge uh, model 1906 U.S. government cartridge. So that was the naming system, but rather than using that big long name that's on the side of the uh, shipping, the government shipping crates, we used simply 30-06 Springfield. A word about the Springfield name while I'm at it. Springfield Armory was a uh, government controlled armory, government owned and operated armory that was uh, run in Springfield, Massachusetts. And uh, it was founded by George Washington under George Washington's administration, and it ran until I believe it was 1964 under Secretary of uh, Defense Robert McNamara, who uh, basically shut it down. And uh, that was the transition from the M14 to the M16 rifle era. So he, he closed that plant down and uh, it reassigned rifle manufacturing to private uh, enterprise. So that's where you get the name Springfield Armory. But just say, wait a minute, you have Springfield Armory M1As and you have all these Springfield Armory uh, handguns. Well, those are, those are commercially made. The private, it's a private manufacturer which has uh, used that particular Springfield Armory in their uh, logo, in their name, but it has no association with, never had any association with whatsoever the U.S. government owned uh, and operated uh, U.S. Armory at Springfield, Massachusetts. So there's two, two separate entirely different things. Even though they're making the M1A, which is essentially a civilian version of the M14 selective fire rifle, uh, that rifle is nevertheless a, a civilian uh, non-selective fire uh, rifle. So that, that moves us along down to uh, other hyphenated uh, numbers that you might see commonly used in the uh, American scheme of things. You have 22250. Well, 22 is the bore diameter, hyphen 250 uh, is taken from the original case uh, dimension. The original case was the 250 3000 Savage, 250 hyphen 3000 Savage. 250 being uh, the bore diameter and 3000 not being uh, anything associated with the old black powder naming system whatsoever, but that 3000 meaning that it was a 3,000 foot per second, 87 grain bullet in the original Savage loading. So the 250 3,000 Savage uh, was uh, a case used to be necked down to 22 caliber, and that, that same case was used uh, in the end of its name. So you have 22 hyphen 250 Remington. And that was a long-standing, uh, that was a long-standing wildcat, as I, as I spoke of in uh, the uh, 22250 video, uh, but you can you can watch that video and get a little bit more information on that and many of the other cases that I'll be uh, describing the cartridges that I'll be describing. But that's how that name evolved. So you had basically two different uh, you had two different systems there, which was the 22 to, uh, 22250 Remington, and that was based on the uh, 250-3000 Savage, which is commonly called the 250 Savage these days simply because other bullet weights evolved into 100 grain bullet weight that, uh, and, and others that uh, they, they eventually dropped the 3000 designation, but many of the old timers still rem remember it as the 250-3000. Alright, there are, uh, I spoke of the uh, European designation using the metric uh, with, the, with the time symbol that is the bullet and then the uh, case length. Now, we have also uh, evolved other practices which uh, basically are handed down from our, uh, our British uh, connection. Our, you know, we're, we're 
originally were a colonial uh, country, and that's where we derive our inch from, is from uh, Great Britain. So when we say, when we say 300 uh, Savage or 300 Winchester Magnum, we are talking about the bore diameter. That is, that is largely describing the bore diameter. Bore diameter is different than the groove diameter. The bore diameter is simply what it implies, is the, the boring out, the original drilling out of the barrel blank, and that lift the, uh, the top of the lens, that before the rifling was pulled out or broached or button rifled, or in, in now in modern day guns many times, there is a hammer forging process that creates the whole thing without having to actually bore uh, down through the, through the barrel blank. But in any case, that the top of the lens is the bore diameter. So when you hear uh, 300 Winchester Magnum, you're talking about the narrower diameter. And when you hear 308 Winchester, you're talking about the grooves rather beneath the lens. So it's a wider dimension. And that is the uh, bullet diameter. So the bullet diameter corresponds exactly to the uh, rifling groove diameter. Now in the case of Sierra, and perhaps some other manufacturers that I'm not aware of, uh, Sierra applies an additional half a thousandth of an inch to uh, their bullet diameters simply to make sure that they operate fully in all bores, regardless of uh, any possible imperfections in the, in the depth of the rifling. So uh, a, 308, a, a 308 bullet, if you purchase it from uh, Sierra, if you, if you mic it, micrometer, uh, you'll find that it measures point uh, 3085, it measures 308 and a half, in other words, is what a machinist would call it. So there are two different there are two different naming standards. You can name a cartridge for its uh, groove diameter, which is the bullet diameter, or you can uh, call it and name it by its uh, the top of the lens, which is its bore diameter. Now, in naming cartridges, uh, things run rather loose. Naming of naming of cartridges in this country has uh, sometimes corresponded to the actual dimension of a bullet, and very frequently it does not. Especially in the case using the uh, 22 bore as a very very classic example. Out of all the different 22 bores, centerfire bores. Now I'm talking not the not the uh, rimfire, but of all the different centerfire bores, there is only only one commercially made that is actually uh, named according to its true uh, groove diameter, and that's the 224 Weatherby. Uh, all the others have uh, various, not associated with the actual um, bore diameter. The 22250 is named after the bore diameter being 22, uh, but the 218B, that's a 224, that's a true 22 caliber bullet, but it's called the 218B. It's a pretty much obsolete cartridge these days, but you'll see that name. The 221 Fireball, 222 Remington, 223 Remington, 222 Remington Magnum, and so forth and so on, all the way down the list. 225 uh, Winchester, all those different cartridges, and including the 220 Swift. No matter what those designations are, no matter what, what the name implies, they all are 224. Uh, bullet. Now the 22 Hornet uh, did have a different, uh, they had two different uh, groove diameters at one time. Uh, they're largely obsolete. Uh, any, of the, any of the smaller groove diameters are long obsolete. Uh, and by the way, that was a cartridge that was uh, developed by uh, Colonel Townsend Whalen, who was the uh, armorer. Uh, he was the man in charge at the uh, Springfield Armory. Uh, many years ago, and uh, he was the developer of that cartridge as well as the developer of the 35 Whalen, which bears his name. And the 35 Whalen is a uh, necked up version of the 3006. Another series of hyphenated names that you'll frequently see have to do with the 06 designation. The 06 designation you'll see on 25 hyphen 06, you'll see it naturally on 3006, uh, and there are, there are some various wildcats that used. Uh, the 06 designation uh, for, for 6 millimeter, 6.5 millimeter 06, and things like that. But those were all based on the actual 3006 case that was neck down or neck up. Now, and by the way, if you're looking for a really uh, fine, uh, big game, 
truly big game, large game, including grizzly bear uh, cartridge. The 35 Whalen uh, is, is one of the very best that was ever introduced. Very, very efficient cartridge that drives uh, very big, heavy bullets at, at, at high velocity. Very nice cartridge that's a lot easier to handle than a uh, 338 Winchester Magnum. Uh, it's, a, it's a tremendously uh, efficient and effective cartridge. So those are, that's the family of 30-06s that uh, sometimes and not always use the 06 designation to denote its parentage. A couple of most notable ones that don't uh, denote that parentage but are indeed uh, from that parent case are the 270 Winchester and the 280 Remington, uh, the 280 Remington both which uh, have been uh, necked down from the 306 case and the shoulders variously have been moved a little bit uh, in the process to make sure that those uh, cartridges cannot be chambered in the wrong guns. Uh, that's, Sammy is always cooperating with the industry to make sure that uh, we don't have too many uh, you know, casual mistakes that could blow a gun up or, to, or for that matter even if it just uh, meant that a bullet rattled down the bore. Uh, it's not going to be very effective. So uh, some of the some of the most uh, dangerous combinations, for instance, an eight millimeter Mauser can be chambered into a 306 uh, rifle, and if it's fired, that will blow the gun up because uh, it's a much bigger bullet and the it's a shorter cartridge. So uh, the ogive will seat itself properly in the uh, chamber, and it can it can. Uh, blow the gun up. So you got to be very, very careful. Whenever you're shopping for cartridges, make sure that you're buying the cartridge which is imprinted on the side of your barrel. And uh, don't don't be uh, playing with uh, fire by trying different cartridges. I've heard so many different, I've heard so many different uh, wives tales about how one cartridge can be used in another chamber and everything. That's never ever the case. Use only the cartridge which is specified on the barrel, and if you have any doubt whatsoever, contact the manufacturer directly, and they'll be sure to tell you. Uh, but don't leave it up to don't leave it up to guess, and don't go online and start asking people because all you have to do is get the uh, wrong boneheaded answer, and you could be in for serious trouble. And it, this, you're talking about trouble that can uh, basically take your head off. Now there are a lot of there are a lot of different cartridges that uh, you know have various naming standards, uh, and there's sometimes mixtures, uh, but all your 6 millimeter bores are true 243 diameter um, bullets. Um, the 6.5 are 264 diameter bullets. The uh, 7 millimeter uh, cartridge are all 284 diameter bullets. Uh, the, 7, uh, the 270 cartridge is a 270 Seven diameter bullet. The 308 uh, cartridge is a 308 diameter bullet, it's true, true to its name. Uh, but the 3006 is also a 308 diameter bullet. Now another hyphenated name that you'll see that's that's from that's derived from the uh, parent case of the 308 is the seven millimeter 08. And the, and there's so many different uh, cartridges that were. Uh, basically uh, using the 308 cartridge case as a parent case, uh, being the 243, um, the um, 260 Remington is a 308 parent case, um, and so it goes. That the, uh, you, you, have to, you have to basically keep your mind open to all the different ways that the uh, cartridges are named. So when, when cartridges come out, uh, and they come out with a cartridge that says it's a 260 Remington, it's a true 264 bore. That's the actual bore diameter. I think I've probably uh, opened up the world of uh, standard cartridges. Now let me explain a little bit about magnum cartridges. I've got here, uh, I've got here some of the uh, standard a standard cartridge case, and I'll bring it up and show you. A standard, a standard case uh, design, which is rimless. It has no this extraction groove. Uh, there is a rim, but that's this is called a rimless case because the rim does not protrude farther than the body of the case. But this extraction groove is cut into the side of the case uh, to form its means of uh, getting it out of the gun. But 
It's called a rimless cartridge and right up here, halfway between the neck and the shoulder, is called the datum line. It's a place where engineers measure between uh, the, the shoulder and the base, of the, the base of the case. And that is the headspace dimension. That, that maintains the correct distance inside the chamber so that the firing pin can reach uh, the, the uh, primer and uh, to safely set it off without the case stretching and, and uh, splitting in two. Now, our Magnum cases are derived from this family of beauties right here. This is a uh, 375 Holland and Holland, 375 H&H Magnum. Now you'll notice that they have here this, the classic uh, belted base. This belted base is actually, it's using a rimless design uh, of a rim. In other words, there is the, the rim itself protrudes no, protrudes no farther than the uh, diameter of the, the belt. That provides e easy feeding through a uh, stacked magazine without the, without the rounds getting hum, hung up on each other. And so why do they put this belt on here? Contrary to uh, popular understanding, this is not to enhance the strength of the case. This belt does nothing to uh, strengthen the case. The belt is put on for the express purpose of giving it headspace. Because this case, uh, the family of uh, Holland and Holland cases, uh, have a very, very narrow, shallow taper from one end to the other, and a very, very typically a very, very shallow uh, shoulder. The shoulder is not sufficient to support the case uh, at a headspace dimension there. Uh, so that, that shoulder, rather than having uh, headspace there, the headspace is created back here, and this belt forms a form of a rim, just as if you would have a rim on, uh, this is a, a 32 Winchester Special, and as you can see, this has got a, a full rim that extends beyond the diameter of uh, the base of the case. But that would hang up on a stacked magazine. These are usually used in tubular magazines. But, so why did, why did they use such a shallow taper on their, on their case then? If they had just simply put a bigger shoulder, they would have had, they would have had the uh, correct head spacing dimension. Well, the reason being because when Holland and Holland was first loading this cartridge, they used, a, they used a powder which is called cordite. In fact, it's not a powder at all. It's a long-stranded uh, it, long propellant that's amber-colored, and it was rather kinky. Think of kind of uh, spaghetti that went wild. And that was stacked, that was stacked inside this case, uh, you know, in, in, a, in a bundle. And that particular bundle had to be kept close to the uh, brass case, and therefore uh, it had a very, very shallow, uh, almost straight-sided, uh, almost a straight-sided wall. So that was the purpose behind the belt. So why did we adopt a belt on our magnums if uh, they didn't need it? Well. In one particular case, this is, this is the uh, 458 Winchester Magnum, it was a beautiful uh, situation because this has no shoulder whatsoever. And uh, because a, uh, a, a case mouth was not uh, available with the heavy crimp that's used on this cartridge, uh, they took advantage of this, this belt right here for the same reason that Holland and Holland did. So that's the reason why it appeared on the 458 Winchester Magnum, and it was also a very convenient way to continue using it on things such as the 300 Winchester Magnum, the 7mm Remington Magnum, and that whole group of Magnums that appeared throughout the years, the 338 Winchester and whatnot, and the 6.5, uh, no matter what it was, for so many years, all our American belted Magnums appeared with this same uh, head size. And that head size is identical to uh, its original parent, uh, which was the uh, 375 and the 300 Holland and Holland and all those. So that's where, that's where we derive that particular handgun, system. Handgun cartridges are sometimes a very confusing thing. The 38 Special and 357 are some of the most, that's one of the most confusing 
uh, families of all. The 38 special was named for the actual uh, chamber dimension rather than the bullet diameter or the bore diameter. So if you measure a 38 special cartridge case, you're going to come up with one thousandth less than the actual uh, naming of the case, which is 38.38. So how does that become a 357 uh, with a, a 357 bore? Why did they do that instead of naming uh, from a 38 to a 38 magnum? Well, that's a good question, and that's, that's their option. They, uh, when Smith & Wesson uh, designed the 357 magnum, I guess they decided to uh, switch gears. They didn't, however, with uh, the 44 Special when they named it the 44 Magnum. I kind of I kind of think that that's probably because it sounded like a bigger number and they just wanted to stick with that. I don't know. But like I say, these are all their option. Uh, they get to they, they get to name uh, their, their cartridge the way they want. So you have the 38 Special becoming the 357 for its board, for its uh, rifle uh, dimension, for its rifling dimension, and you have the uh, which is the bullet diameter, and you have the 44 Magnum becoming uh, that name from the 44 Special, which is just sim in both cases, they're just simply the original parent case, which was lengthened by about a tenth of an inch to prevent uh, dangerous chambering of the larger into the smaller uh, gun frame. Now, does that standard hold true with everything? No, it doesn't, because there is no standard. The 41 Magnum had no parent. Uh, the 41 Magnum was a, a raw, new design of its own uh, without any original parentage. So the, when they named the 41, uh, the 41 Magnum, uh, they simply named it for its uh, bore diameter. And now the, that's another thing which you can kind of keep in mind is that the difference between the 41 Magnum bore diameter and the, and the uh, 44 Magnum uh, bore diameter are not all that different because the 44 Magnum uh, groove diameter is actually uh, 0 0.430 or 429 in some cases. And I've even seen, I've even seen less. So uh, that's, that's how things can be uh, varied. And uh, the, uh, the, the, various, uh, the various names that are associated with uh, handgun uh, cartridges in many cases hail back to uh, European designations. Uh, the 9mm uh, Luger originally was, uh, you know, that was designed by the um, German uh, military and that particular cartridge was uh, given various names uh, throughout Europe, but 9mm Luger tends to be, uh, it's, that's, that's the name by which it's generally associated. The, uh, the, other, the other cartridge which you'll hear about is the 380. Now the 380 is a true nine millimeter bore, and the uh, but the 380 in Europe is oftentimes called the uh, nine millimeter short or nine millimeter uh, corto, meaning short in Spanish. Those that's the same that's the same uh, bore diameter, but with a, a shorter uh, case capacity. Generally speaking, up until just a few years ago, most 380s were uh, based on blowback design. Uh, handguns and the 9mm Luger had to be, because of its much higher pressure, uh, it had to be used at a locking bolt uh, slide. So that, that's, how, that's how those names sometimes uh, confuse people. I very frequently get uh, questions about whether a 9mm uh, can fire a 380, and absolutely not. They're, they're, two, they're two entirely distinct cartridges and one has nothing to do with the other other than its bore diameter, its bullet diameter. And uh, so it's not it's not a shorter, it just, you know, it's not a short version of the nine millimeter as the twenty-two short is a short version of the twenty-two long rifle. They're not the same. It's a different it's a different naming standard entirely. I hope I've clarified a few of the details. I think the most important thing is to just remain uh, open-minded and remember that when you're looking at all these different uh, cartridge cases and dimensions and, uh, and all that stuff, you're generally referring to uh, certain uh, bullet diameters. There are certain parent cases by which 
Uh, most cartridges are based, whether it's the 3006 uh, base, uh, the 220, the original 222 base, which is uh, developed in 1950 by Remington, which is used throughout all the different uh, family of 222s, whether it starts with the 221 Fireball, working up with the, the 222 Remington Magnum, 223, and so forth. Um, and um, I think there's, there's, one, there's one little curious thing that um, is good to know. The, uh, the 204, the 204 Ruger uh, uses the uh, 222 Remington Magnum case. So for any of you 222 Remington Magnum owners that uh, have been left without any brass to use in your, uh, 220, uh, in your 222 Remington Magnum, you can neck up your 204 Ruger cases and that will very nicely accommodate your uh, 222 Remington Magnum. So that's it. God bless.